Praise the Lord, I am more than conqueror. Our prophetic focus for the months have always been God's plan for me is in his book. Amen. It sounds sweet, isn't it? God's plan for me. You must always know God has a plan and it should make you relaxed. God has a plan. Even when things look ugly and nasty, tell yourself, God has a plan. And his plan will prevail. Amen. Amen. He doesn't have a plan to destroy you, no. He doesn't call people out of darkness into deeper darkness. He calls them out of darkness into marvelous light. When he calls you, he calls you to be blessed, to make life better. Come unto me. That's what he said in Matthew 11. All ye that labor and heavy laden, I will give you rest. Amen. So you don't come to God. You don't become a Christian to have more body. Rather, to have a lighter body. And the more you walk with God, the less are the body. Life becomes sweeter, easier, more glorious, more colorful, more enjoyable. I will give you rest. <laughs> from diverse kind of struggles. You will not struggle again this year. Because if God is helping you, how can you struggle? No way. It's impossible to be struggling when God is helping you. But without him, a luta continua. <laughs> Victoria is not a satan. <laughs> if God is not there, <laughs> victory is not certain. <laughs> Praise God. Life is a gamble, a big gamble without partnership with God. You can lose. You can fail. It can be disastrous. Always be confident. You know, Paul said, I'm confident of this very thing, that he that began a good work in you will do it until the day of Christ. I'm confident. I'm confident. Confident. And our teaching series has been God's plan for our lives is in his book. There's so much. In his book, David said, open down my eyes to behold wondrous things in your law. And I pray all throughout this year, you'll be seeing great and wondrous things in the book of the Lord. That you say, wow, wow. Every time there is revelation, revolution follows. Transformation. The breaking forth of light brings revival. Revival is an awakening. That is restoration of life. And wherever there is life, there is progress because there is freshness. Life brings progress. That is one characteristic of living thing is that it grows. Every time there is life, there is productivity. Because every one of us is alive here, cells are dying, new cells are being manufactured or born in your body. Millions. A lot because there is one. Once, once any life goes out of any organism, this process of creation stops. Praise God. So we shall be looking into God's plan and how to assess them from his word. What is this plan of God and how do I assess it from his word? Look at Haggai chapter 2 verse 7 to verse 9. I will shake all nations and the desire of all nations shall come. When God begins to shake, shake, shake. That thing people are desiring. The Bible said, after all these things do the Gentiles seek. That is Matthew 6, 32. But seek you first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. And the shaking have already started. This year there will be a lot of shaking. And when there is a shaking, some people lose their position. And some people take over. Amen. There was a shaking and someone lost his throne. Esther took over. <laughs> Praise God. I will shake all nations, and the desire of all nations shall come. And when that happens, I will fill this house with glory. Say glory. glory. Say the Lord of hosts. He's called Lord of hosts, so he's able to do what he has said. Verse 8. The silver is mine, and the gold is mine, say the Lord of hosts. The glory of this later house shall be greater than the former. I didn't hear you, Amen. This means this year shall be far greater than last year. Yeah. You saw glory last year. God says it's a small thing. 
greater glory is coming your way. That is one of the evidences that your fasting and prayer was effective. Greater, greater glory. A jump. Our father called it next levels. He said the silver is mine, the gold is mine. I will fill this house with glory. The Greek word they used, I mean interpreted glory, also means wealth. Preachers. Wealth. That is why the next verse to verse 8 is talking about money. The silver is mine. The gold is mine. Telling you that the glory there in verse 7 is wealth. Wealth. I will fill this house with glory. That means money will be flowing through you. Through your life. Through account. Mega wealth distributing. Flowing into different direction. It shall be flowing into the kingdom of God. It shall be flowing to your relations. It shall be flowing to the needy. It shall be flowing to the helpless. I will fill this house with glory. That is God's plan for your life. Amen. Glory also means splendor. Splendor. Attraction. You become center of attraction. Because glory attracts. When your life becomes glorious. People just want to be like you, be with you, enjoy with you, they celebrate you. Glory also means beauty. Your life becomes beautiful. And beauty is admirable. Praise God. Even some that don't want to acknowledge it, beauty is admirable. For instance, when a beautiful, expensive car passes, you know, many people will pay attention. Forget. They say beauty is the eye of the beholder, but there are beauty everybody beholds at the same time. <laughs> there, are, there is a car that will pass by. Even if you hate prosperity preachers, you acknowledge, you may be, be in denial, but you know you're a hypocrite. You just know this one is sweet. Oh, this is good. There are ladies that will pass by. Almost all the men around say, Wow. <laughs> <laughs> the dressing, the look, the majesty, everything, even the accent, and hello. <laughs> you need to be anti beauty for you to say, ah, this one is not, you forget it. <laughs> like Sarah Abraham's wife was beautiful. The Bible said so. There are ugly people. The Bible identifies that. Amen. Jacob had two wives. One was beautiful, one was ugly. <laughs> there are people, if they walk through here, in fact, everybody will cast their vote. This woman is ugly. Forget. <laughs> it is just, they may just by sympathy not to make her feel bad. Say, beauty is the idol beholder. Don't worry. There, will be people, there are people that see you as beautiful, even including me. But in your heart of hearts, you will agree this girl, this woman is ugly. There are cars that are ugly. Amen. That's who parked this car here. <laughs> Glory means beauty, splendor, wealth. Your life shall be beautiful. He said he makes all things beautiful in his time. Your time have come. This God knows how to decorate destiny. God's plan for you is in Romans chapter 8, verse 20, 29 to 30. He said, for those whom he foreknew, he also did predestinate to conform to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn, firstborn, not only born, firstborn, not only child, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Christianity is all about being like Christ. It's not an escape route to heaven. No. It's a call to be a channel of blessing. It's a call to fulfill destiny. It's a call to be a vessel of honor in the hand of God. It's a call to enjoy the blessings of Abraham. It's a call for impactful living. It's a call to fulfill God's assignment in a grand style. Then after you are finished, then they can say to you, welcome thou great and faithful servant 
enter into the rest of thy father. That is why you don't die immediately, you get born again. He said in verse 30, for those he, he predestined, he said, for whom he did predestinate, everyone he did predestinate, them he also called. And whom he called, them he also justified. And whom he justified, them he also glorified. Are you justified? Yes. Justification means declared, forgiven, brand new man, washed, righteous. Everyone that has been justified has been glorified. What does it mean to be glorified? It means in the realm of the spirit, your status have changed from just being an ordinary person to a son of God. He said, I've said, you are God. All of you are children of the most high God. As a son of God, you are called, empowered to radiate his beauty, to radiate his image, to be a distributor of his blessing. God's approved agent on earth. Everyone that is justified has been glorified. To be glorified means to be seated with Christ in heavenly places. To be above poverty, above sickness, above the devil, above demons, above shame. For he that is from above is above all. Everyone, everyone is glorified. But if you don't know this, you will not expect it. And if you don't know what to do to enjoy a life of glory, it will not be your experience. There is a difference between the finished work of Christ and a reality on earth. What is real. So not all that are glorified are manifesting glory. Glory is the opposite of shame. Amen. What does it take to enjoy glory? What does it take? Proverbs chapter 3 verse 35. The wise in heart shall inherit glory. It takes the wisdom of God to see glory. To touch glory. Wherever there is glory, shame disappears. The wise in heart shall inherit glory. Jesus said, learn from me. Learn from me. Learn from me. His embodiment of wisdom, he said. Learn from me. He takes the wisdom of God to see glory in your marriage. Glory in your business. In your family. All around. The wise in heart shall inherit glory. And there is one aspect of wisdom that I want to dwell or center on this morning and it is so winning. In Proverbs 11 verse 30 the Bible says he that wins soul is wise. So winning is divine wisdom for entering into your glory. For stepping from one level of glory to another level after the order of 2 Corinthians chapter 3 verse 18. We all with open faces beholding us in a glass the glory of the Lord are changed into the same image from glory to glory even by, as by the spirit of the Lord. Soul winning. This is why when Jesus was 12 he told his parents don't you know I shall be about my father's business. Let God's business be your business. Let God's interest be your interest. Jesus spoke so much about the kingdom of God more than any other thing on earth. You can't see shame carrying the ark of God. No. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Everyone genuinely sold out to God and the interest of his kingdom cannot end up in shame. Though your beginning may be small, you are permitted to come into the house of the Lord battered, shattered, shameful, disgraced, afflicted, oppressed. But if you remain the same, we'll put a question mark on your redemption. If you remain the same, we'll put a question mark on your stewardship. If you remain the same, we'll put a question mark on 
your connectivity. Because upon Mount Zion, there shall be deliverance from evil. If you say poverty is not evil, I dash you and your family forever. <laughs> it's evil. It kills. It kills. There are people who are dead today who would have been alive if their father had small money. If their husband had small money. <laughs> poverty is evil. It's destructive. The Bible said the destruction of the poor is their poverty. When you are living a life of glory, you are living in Eden. Eden means abundance. Where you have abundance of all things, after the order of 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 8, it said, God is able to make all grace abound towards you. So that you, having all sufficiency in all things, may abound unto every good work. All sufficiency. Not having lack at all. Part of the reason why the Lord wants to be your shepherd and why the Lord came into your life is that so that you don't want. That is why David said, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. That is glory. That is glory. That is a beautiful life. When things are working for you, things are available for you, things are passing through you, you are enjoying life the way God ordained it, the way you desire it. Amen. He said, delight thyself also in the Lord and he shall give you the desires of thy heart. Acquaint now thyself with him. Be at peace and good shall come unto you. I mean, from nowhere, from strange places, from expected places, good comes. Someone will just be in his office, in his own house and the contact that will change your life will be made. Just suddenly. I went now and I said with him, be at peace, be at rest. If you know this, God will relax. Whatsoever he tells you to do, do it. Do it. Because this God can turn water to wine. So he can turn poverty to prosperity. He said, the Lord shall comfort Zion. He shall comfort all our waste places. He shall turn her wilderness to Eden, her desert to the garden of the Lord. He can turn things around overnight in your life. Jesus said, I shall be about my father's business. From an early age, he was going about his father's business. God's servant, Bishop Edubo, will always tell us from early, from teenage years, he began pursuing God, pursuing God, pursuing God, pursuing God. David said, my heart followed hard after thee. Followed hard. Daddy. Now, so winning has three demands that we shall be looking at today. The first demand is demand of intersection. Being a prayer warrior for the Lord. And that is a calling of every Christian because a priest is a mediator, an intercessor, one that stands between the people and God, bringing their petition and bringing revelation and instruction. And God said, every one of us is a priest. And your priestly assignment is to stand in the gap for the lost souls, for new converts, for brethren. In Ephesians chapter 6 verse 18, the Bible said, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for who? All saints. When you hear someone have a challenge, you can note it down. Doesn't need to be your blood brother. In the night, you pray, you pray, you pray. And then, if you have their contact, once in a while, you can ask after one day or two days, How are you? What's the situation with your daughter? What's the situation with your accommodation or your job? Praying always. The kingdom of God advances by prayer. By prayer, because prayer generates power, prayer clears obstacles. As soon as Zion travailed, she brought forth her children. Shall a nation be born in one day at once? Get involved in praying kingdom advancement prayer. If you can't be in a covenant hour of prayer in the morning, if you cannot come here, join at your own time. There are different churches, you in a chapel churches online, you can connect to. 
you can come to the office to collect the prayer manual. Thank God, beginning of this year, a lot of prayer manuals have been distributed unto us. You can use them. You can even do it where we are doing it here. You can time yourself if you begin two, two minutes. If you pray 30 prayer points, two, two minutes. How many, how, what, what is the total time? One hour. So, and uh, we have more than 30 prayer points. So everyone can pray one hour. Two prayer points. Two minutes for that prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus. If you don't know anything to say again, you can begin to pray in the spirit. And then, make up your mind this year. I will be a praying man, a praying woman. Nobody gets saved without someone or some people praying somewhere. Prayer is God's method for meeting the needs of men on earth. It's God's method. That is why I say, ask. If you don't ask, I will not do it. You have not because you ask not. Everyone can get involved. God's servant speaking yesterday said, most especially the aged is their major ministry. Because physical strength has diminished. You can't jump around and before, but your mouth is not short. You can sit down on the chair, lie on the bed, and pray, and pray, and pray, and pray. <laughs> he that lives a life of prayer is he that dwells in the secret place of the Most High. There's a kind of glory, kind of atmosphere around your life if you're a man and a woman of prayer. And that is glory. The glory of the Lord keeps surrounding you. It's evident in your life and changes things. Amen. So have a prayer plan for this year. Have a prayer plan. Have a prayer plan. Thank God for the guide that is given unto us. The second demand is witnessing. Being a witness for Jesus. Witnessing. Witnessing. A witness is not a preacher. I might be a preacher and not be a witness. Praise God. For instance, what I've been doing since now is preaching, not witnessing. Witnessing is sharing testimonies. What you have experienced, what you have touched, what you have seen, what your hands have handled. That's witnessing. You don't need to be a preacher to be a witness. You don't need to know any verse in the Bible to be a witness. And if you are not a witness, you are not a true Christian. Your Christianity is fake. <laughs> you can read the entire Bible, cram the entire Bible until you have encountered God. You are not yet saved. And until I've encountered God, you don't know God yet. It's pure theory. Praise God. It's one thing to hear about prosperity and believe prosperity. It's another thing for you to be a partaker of covenant prosperity. It's one thing to hear about healing. Oh, God is powerful, he can heal. It's another thing for you to experience divine healing. Not that you have heard the testimony of others. You have heard the preacher preach about healing. Have you been healed before by Jesus supernaturally? Have you been blessed? <laughs> it's one thing to hear that God fights and protests and preserves. He's another one to experience it firsthand. Amen. You have tested. David said, oh, test and see that the Lord is good. God is to be tested. His power is to be tested. His goodness is to be experienced. Otherwise, Christianity is mere religion to you. If you come to church ever and again every Sunday and you don't have encounters, you have never had a healing, you have never been delivered. That is why God's servant will always say, if you are in this church three months and no change of story, then better try somewhere else. Because three months is enough to have an encounter. Not that all your needs will be met in three months, but something Happen, I, I know he touched me and made me whole. So you can share the testimony of others. First, your own testimony. This is what the Lord has done for me. Come and see what the Lord has done for me. He has taken my service. <laughs> so you can share your own testimony. 
You can share the testimony of others that you know personally. And then, maybe by extension, those you don't know you heard from the altar. Obviously, you have personal testimonies. You have testimony of others you know personally, where they used to be, what has happened to them. And you have heard testimonies of things that God has done in the life of others that you don't know. That is witnessing. Including your salvation experience. The things I used to do, I do them no more. The things I used to say, I say them no more. The things I used to wear, I wear them no more. There is a great change since I'm born again. Even your personal transformation in character. The Bible says we are called to glory and virtue. So these two dimensions, glory, virtue, character, and impact is what Christianity is all about. And you must have them. If you have so much money, so much healing, so much, and you don't have character, no, that's not enough. I have character. Amen. You are moral moron. <laughs> character without power. <laughs> that's religion. <laughs> Amen. So we are called to glory and virtue. Glory and virtue. Glory and virtue. Glory and virtue. That's witnessing. So everyone is called to witness. You can use Facebook, Twitter, all kinds of social media platforms to witness. It's very easy to witness your friends, neighbors, classmates, colleagues, even to strangers you can witness. Like the Samaritan woman said, come and see what God has done. This, this man has told me all things that I've ever done, but we're just meeting for the first time. Is this not a Christ? Can we deny this? Not the Christ we've been waiting for. Praise God. That's witnessing. Someone asked in the Bible, can any good thing come out of Nazareth? And the response said, come and see. I've seen. This man is from Nazareth, but something good is coming out from him that have affected my life. So he said, come and see. That is witnessing. This year, you will have testimonies to serve as a witness. Amen. In the court of law, witness is something that validates a point. And on based on witness, you can be acquitted or convicted. Amen. Witness. In Job 42 verse 5, it said, I've heard of thee by the hearing of the ear. Now my eyes have seen thee. I have heard, but now I see <laughs> There's a difference between what you hear from the altar and what you see in your own life. What you see in your own life. The third demand is bringing the soul. So, soul bring us. Soul bring us. So, sometimes some people may not know how to witness or don't have the courage and boldness to witness. But you can bring people to church and they will hear the preaching. They will hear the testimony of others. They will come under this atmosphere of the glory and the anointing of God that changes their lives. You can talk to people, strangers, brothers, neighbors. Come. Today is Sunday. Just like some people invited David. David said, I was glad when they said to me, come let's go to the house of the Lord. He said, oh, so there's a Christian program there. Oh, wonderful. I'm free. Let's go. Somebody invited David to church and David was excited. Some people may never come to church until you invite them. So, be bold about it. You can use flyers, handbills. And then, according to your resources, you can sponsor their coming to church. You can pay for their transport. 10 rand, 20 rand, 30 rand may not be too big. Even if it's just one soul, you're able to pay for like God's servant was speaking yesterday. He said, if you want to see glory, you want to see the blessing, start from where you are. Start from where you are. Start from what you have. Start from what you have. And begin to move. And begin to do the things that God expects you to do. So get involved in praying. Get involved in witnessing. Get involved in bringing people to church. So, I mean, I mean so bring us. is a very important dimension of kingdom advancement. Praise God. Somebody brought Peter to Jesus. His name is Simon. He found it and brought him. Brought him to Jesus. And his life was no longer the same. 
So everyone that is involved in this three shall be rewarded. Everyone this year is very important. Jesus said, don't you know I shall be about my father's business. You can't be about the father's business and still suffer lack and want. No way. What are the benefits of participating or being a fruit bearing believer? Number one, health and vitality. In John chapter 15, verse 1, verse 2, verse 1, Jesus said, I'm the branch, I'm the vine, you are the branches. My father is the husbandman. Praise God. He uh, said, every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he take it away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purges it, that is, he prunes it, that it might bring forth more fruit. He services it. And because your life is important to God, you're advancing the kingdom. Your health becomes important to him also. Your strength becomes important to him also. Because if you are down or you are in hospital bed, you can no longer do the things you used to do on a weekly basis. This is why it's important to be up and out, going out, reaching out to the laws. It guarantees health. Number two, peace that passes human understanding. Peace, peace, peace that passes human understanding. Supernatural peace. Even if Johannesburg is burning and boiling, you can be at peace in your house. At peace of mind. Praise God. Persecution can be here and there. Accusation here and there. Condemnation here and there. Mockery here and there. But you are at peace. Jesus said, peace I give you. My peace I live with you. Not as the world gives. He said, in the world you may have tribulation, but in me you shall have peace. Everyone that is going out, winning souls, getting involved, is a carrier of peace. In Matthew 10, he said, as you are going, if you go to a place and they accept you, your peace shall be deposited there. If they reject you, does the, this thing, because your peace is going with you. And then they can have tribulation. Praise God. So know that you are a carrier of peace. Peace is, peace is a spiritual quantity, softness that can be deposited that is transit, dynamic. Amen. Number three, joy unspeakable, full of glory. Because the kingdom of God is all about righteousness, peace, joy in the Holy Ghost. In Luke chapter 10, verse 17, the Bible said, and the 70 returned with joy. The 70, he sent them out. He went and preached and they returned with joy. Saying, even the devils were subject unto us in your name. Praise God. Then finally you enjoy inheritance of glory. Your glory becomes a reality. And what is the negative or what is the consequence of not being a fruit bearing Christian? You will be disconnected. In John 15 verse 2 he said any brand that doesn't bear fruit is cut off. That means you are disconnected. And things start dying. And you, you, the life becomes hard. This virtue this grace that flows through Jesus, through his servants, into his church, into all the members, you will disconnect yourself from this flow of divine grace that is necessary to live a life of glory. The Lord bless you. Today is mantle impartation service. So get said, something from Bishop Oyedebo will be deposited in your life today. That deposit will change your life. In the name of Jesus, the things that make him succeed, the things that make him great, shall be transferred into your life. In Romans 1, verse 11, he said, I long to see you that I might impart unto you some spiritual gifts to the end that you might be established. There are unctions that are transferable. There are unctions that are non-transferable. You know, there are unctions and graces you develop on your own personal devotion, prayer, study, fasting and there are also graces that until it moves from one person into your life you can't have it no matter how much you do you walk by yourself like in second timothy chapter one verse eight verse six he said uh, paul wrote to timothy he said wherefore i put thee in remembrance that thou stir up the gift of god which is in thee by the putting on of my hands there's a gift of god that is in you 
and he came when I put my hand on you. But today, God's servant is not here to lay hands because that is not necessary. There is a mantle ministry that is given to the body of Christ, particularly the New Testament church. What is a mantle? A mantle is simply a handkerchief like this that have come in contact, deliberately in contact with a servant, chosen apostle, prophet of God for the purpose of transferring the same unction and grace put upon him so that needs can be met in the body of Christ. So, there are, Bishop Bedebo cannot be here this morning. He is a canal land daughter. But this handkerchief that came from him can do the same thing that the anointing of God upon his life will do in your own life. Praise God. So that is a mantle. In Acts chapter 19, verse 11, he said, and God, 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 not Paul, God wrought special miracles using the hands of Paul. So don't look at Bishop Oedibo or me, the small boy he sent here, but God walking through Bishop Oedibo through this mantle. Amen. It's all about your faith. It's all about your faith. It's all about your faith. What is the mystery behind the mantle? The woman with the issue of blood knew this mystery. She knew that Jesus is heavily anointed, opening blind eyes, cripples, walking. And she concluded, this anointing upon this man must be upon uh, his clothes. If I wait for him to pray for me, it, will never, it may never happen. So many people ask a prayer request, pray for me, pray for me. All manner of politicians. Even some people can give Peter bribe. Peter say, come on, get up. <laughs> I want to be Jesus. <laughs> Amen. Even Zacchaeus with his money didn't have a chance. That's why he climbed the sycamore tree. Didn't have a chance. The God Jesus knew his heart. He said, come down. I'll be with you. He knew. He saw the multitude. He calculated. Calculated. My money can't help me. My, I don't even have the energy and strength. So he started to climb. Just to see him. Jesus was so powerful that even seeing him was just enough for this rich man. Enough for him. Praise God. Over the years, in different churches I've pastored, I've witnessed people receive incredible miracles by contact with this man. Even this year, I gave someone a mantle, and then there was 24 hours healing and deliverance miracle by the mantle, by the mantle. Okay? In, uh, in Matthew chapter 14, some people heard about what happened in the life of um, the woman with the issue of blood. If you go back home, you read that from 34 to 36. Then when he came to the area of Gennesaret, they took note, ah, that man that works miracle, he's here. He may not have time to pray for every specific need one by one. So he said, Jesus, there's no need. We won't want to bother you. You are very busy. Allow these fellows to touch the hem of your garment. And as many as touch, we're healed. And then, this anointing is everlasting. The gift that the calling of God without repentance. Praise God. Something happened in the Bible in 2 Kings. A man died and then the, some people who were related to him carried him and wanted to bury him. And as they were going about trying to bury him, they began to hear sound of war. Or people are, Maybe there was war. And in fear, not deliberately, not even in faith, in fear because God wanted to teach us a lesson to show us what we didn't know. In fear so that they can be preserved. They said the dead is dead so we have to be alive. So they threw the dead. We don't care what happens to the dead. <laughs> Let's be alive first. They threw his body. And they didn't know that where they threw it, where he landed was the sepulcher of Elisha. Immediately the dead body touched the bones of Elisha. There was power surge, power flowed, and life was restored. He walked out of that sepulchre alive and strong because it was not the prophet, but the unction God put upon the prophet, even though he was dead, the unction was still in his bones. There are mysteries you don't know. Even scientifically, if a man after a man is dead, even the bones, you can, you can clone and do a lot of things in the laboratory using small, small cells from the, the remains of a man that dead many, many, many years. And that is it in the natural, so it is in the spiritual. If Bishop Eric will sit here, two years after today, certain things from him are still there. <laughs> are still there. Certain deposits. And you can connect. 
Praise God. You can connect. By this anointing, by this impartation service, strange things will be happening in your life. In the name of Jesus. Among many other things, you shall be connecting to the grace of God at work upon Bishop David Oedipo. For instance, grace for delight some obedience in case you are struggling to obey God. By this mantle, everything hindering your obedience will come under judgment. You shall be connecting to tireless engagement in kingdom advancement and devils. That means advancing the kingdom becomes a delight. It takes grace. It takes grace. Say not by power, not by mind, but by my spirit, said the Lord. And also grace for advancing the kingdom in prayer. Bishop Abiyo once taught us. He said, one of Yushirubo's major secret is prayer. He said in the early days of this commission, he said sometimes we used to pray eight hours stretch. He said, some days I used to be praying and sleeping and praying. And continue. Eight hours stretch sometimes. And he learned that from Bishop Oedipo. And that is a grace you can connect to. If you are struggling with your prayer life, struggling to pray in my personal prayer, by this impartation service, you shall be connected. In the name of Jesus. Christ your faith.